How much water should a construction worker drink? In this video, I'm gonna give you a couple stories and I'm gonna to talk to you about the minimums. This matters, I live in Phoenix. Let's get this done, I think I know what I'm talking about. So if you wanna know how much water a worker should drink, you have come to the right place. Okay, so let me tell you a story. So I used to like think I was like tough and, and rough and tumbly. I remember a couple, this actually happened to me twice actually. The first story was I was actually helping with the Boy Scouts of America as a leader and I, I got like a 42 hour stomach bug or something like that. Like it just knocked me out. Like, oh my gosh, that is horrible. And I, I was like, after 48 hours, I, I feel pretty good. You know, I'm starting to eat, I'm, I'm drinking again or whatever. And there was this high adventure hike up a mountain. And I took water and everything, but I wasn't hydrated. I did not have the right electrolytes. I did not have the right salts. I did not have the right elements in my body to sustain hydration. So I climbed this thing. I ended up in the hospital. And I don't know if it caused it or if they just found a genetic disorder, but I found out I have a first degree AV block in my heart, which is just a slowing of the signal. There's a first degree, second degree, third degree. Third degree is like you need a pacemaker. Second, third degree, you're like need a pacemaker. But first degree is just a slight slowing in the electrical signal, the electrical pulse in your heart. And so they, I went to an emergency clinic because I didn't feel well. They did that, sent me to the emergency room, and they found out I was severely dehydrated. They, they did the IVs, they got me back up and running. After a couple of days, I was able to walk again, but I was so weak, I couldn't even turn a doorknob. So weak, I couldn't even turn a doorknob. It took me six weeks to feel well after that, and I have never since, ever, felt comfortable on a construction site in that heat without constantly cooling, dousing myself with water, or having water on my person. My endurance just wasn't the same. I'll spare you the second story, but it happened to me again, and this, this point, I, it was like in the transition between winter and summer, where it wasn't hot enough to worry about it, but it was hot enough to where you should be drinking water and my mind didn't like trigger that, you know, hey, you need water, right? And so I got dehydrated again and got very, very sick. And so this has happened, happened a couple of times. So I've always been like on the lookout for this since these happen. I don't care if you're 120 pounds sopping wet or 300 pounds, 350 pounds of muscle and you're like, you're the toughest of the tough. Like you are John Wayne, like incarnate. Like you are like tough. I've seen any male, female, any, all different types of people, big, small, muscular, in fit, not fit, drop like flies in the heat. So staying hydrated is a super important topic. And especially in construction, we don't want sodas. We don't want colored drinks, meaning like different, like blue, red, orange, and green, right, on finished products. Uh, yeah, inside a construction project, but we have to keep people hydrated. So there's some rules of thumb that I wanna give you that you really need to follow, and I hope it expands everybody's perspective to understand we need ice on the job, we need potable water on the job, we need water stations, and we need to make sure that it's always top of mind because we are not robots, we are humans, and we need this to survive, so let's roll. Okay, so general water intake. So every day, it's recommended to intake about eight cups of water. Most people throughout our society are dehydrated constantly. There's two things that remind me of it, two, my two little mishaps. Three, being in Phoenix. The other thing is I donate blood probably about every six weeks and they will tell me if, if I'm dehydrated. And I have 11 kids and anytime we go to doctor's appointment, they'll immediately tell me. So I'm hypervigilant and I know what it takes to keep people hydrated. I also used to take youth, program, youth groups out in the desert, hiking out in the wilderness. And our rule of thumb in certain situations, and this is kind of a joke, I'm not giving this to you as official advice, but you're peeing every hour or you're peeing every half hour or every 15 minutes, depending on your environment. So it's a big deal. But typically it's about eight cups, which is about 64 ounces. And one of the best things for me is either, and let's not get into the recycling stuff yet, but let's either get those amount of plastic water bottles or get a hydration flask with those amounts and have them as a quality of the source 
type system where you've preset them out and now you know you're going through that much water throughout the day. Construction workers, because of physical exposure and heat, and especially in Phoenix, you're going to have to drink quite a bit more than that. We always see in the summer, which I, I absolutely love, the different color of pea charts. I'm not being irreverent, but I'm just saying the color of your urine is a sign of how well you're hydrated. When it starts to get darker yellow, orange, or even into like the dark orange, like you're in trouble, you need to hydrate. But if you're, if you're past like the light yellow, and again, this is not inappropriate, I'm just telling you data, and into the always clear, you could be over hydrating and you could be depleting yourself of the electrolytes, of the nutrients, and of those salts that you need. So you may need the, those replacement packages. You may need to have like a Propel or a Gatorade or something like that to replace that. There are a lot of different supplements for water, but make sure that you're monitoring how often you're urinating and the color. And I love the policy where in the hot summer months on job site trailers and in porta potties, we have those signs, how much water you should be drinking and how to tell either physically or through uh, observing your urine, how well you're doing from a hydration standpoint. There's two things that I want you to know. Heat exhaustion, you know, you're, you're starting to get tired, you're overexerting, your body's having a hard time cooling itself, you're getting red, you're sweating profusely. There's a misconception though, heat stroke, they're like, oh, I had heat stroke. Heat stroke, you're dying. Heat stroke, your body is shutting down. You've stopped sweating, you're starting to overheat, your body has lost the control, its ability to, to, to cool itself down. Your organs are shutting down. This is a 911 emergency. You wanna stay away from both, and if you even get close to heat exhaustion, you need to find a cool place and hydrate. So let's talk about some details here. In hot and humid climates, you're going to wanna drink one cup of water every 20 minutes. And take breaks and get cool when you need to. Okay, so that's a lot, every 20 minutes. And again, like I said, when you're out in the heat, I'm expecting that you're, you're at least going to the restroom, number one, every 30 minutes, if not every 15 minutes. You need to stay hydrated. I really like the concept of having reminders, whether it's on the crew level or the overall job site. I remember times when we've actually used the, the WhatsApp or the actual GroupMe or the text chats on the project site or whatever communication system that you're using to remind foremen and workers, hey, it's time to hydrate, hey, it's time to hydrate, right? But whatever the case is, make sure that you're reminding your folks to hydrate. It's not enough to, to ask them to take care of it themselves. Lead persons and foremen and supervisors need to make sure that it's happening. As you do so, watch for signs of dehydration, watch of signs for heat exhaustion, watch and see if somebody's getting dizzy, if they're getting fatigued. If they themselves notice they have dark urine, they might need to increase their water intake. And I would like to say that this varies. Like if you're, these are guidelines, but if you feel like you need more or less, like do it. If you feel like you need the electrolyte packets, do it. If you need a break at a shorter interval than somebody else, do it. You know your body, listen to your body and take care of it. So normal water intake, Amp it up when it's hot or you're exerting. Amp it up when you have strenuous labor. Make sure to remind yourself and your crew to intake water. Watch how you're feeling. Watch the color of your urine. Notice how often you're urinating. Make sure you take breaks, that we have availability to hydration stations, and that you're using electrolytes when needed. Essentially, this is all about being a part of a buddy system. The general contractors are buddies with the trade partners. The trade partners are buddies with the foreman. Foreman and lead persons are buddies. Workers should be buddies. Everybody should watch each other in, in these hot summer months in these extreme climates and make sure that we're getting people what they need. There's nothing tough about staying away from water. There's nothing tough about not needing to cool down. There's nothing tough about any of this. Take care of yourself and get what you need because any of us could drop at any time. And let me just tell you one quick story. My daughter recently started working as a lifeguard at a water park in Phoenix. And you would be overwhelmed and surprised how many people within the first 30 minutes of coming to the water park start to get symptoms of heat exhaustion 
and have to get a medical treatment and sometimes go to the hospital at a water park. And so if this happens at water parks, how much more is it going to happen on a construction site when we have full gear, full clothing, the sleeves over the arms, bags, we're sweating, and we're exerting a lot of energy. Please follow those guidelines. Please keep our people with hydrated environments and hydration stations. It matters. And I'm going to put all of this in a guide and a Canva graphic in the description below so that you can follow it. And actually, we'll actually pair that with some of these other cool signs about how often you should be drinking water and signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke and how to tell uh, the color based on the color of your urine whether or not you're drinking enough water. So that's all going to be for you as a free gift. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.